I've never really thought about it, but gamblers are a really cool character trope. A character who is yearning after some goal, may it be money, fame, objects, and are willing to risk everything they have, and even things they don't have, to obtain it. Or simply that allure of gambling, the idea of risking everything, putting others' people life on the line, putting so much adrenaline into your heart on the idea of everything going to plan and winning enormously, or seeing it all crash down in your hands. We've all felt that. It's scary, but enthralling at the same time. So many emotions go through your head at once, and Usagoi wants to take those emotions and capitalize them. Usagoi, at its core, wants to explore the intricities, ideals, motivations, and the core building blocks that make up a gambler. This idea has been seen in more minor things like JoJo, but very few other pieces have taken this to such an extent that it even becomes a character study of our protagonist, taking 541 chapters to fully grasp it in its entirety. You also don't have to worry about it getting too popular or ruined because only 5 people maximum actually talk about this manga. It's weird though because those 5 people are like the knights of the round table and Usagoi is King Arthur. They will say it's a 10 out of 10 till the day they die and I'm one of them. What is an Usagoi though and why is it so long? Usagoi is a psychological gambling manga set around our main protagonist, who is nicknamed Usagoi. I know, clever, which actually stands for Light Eater, which is also our main premises too. It's a 3 for 1. It sets its expectations for the viewer as a simple high stakes gambling manga with another intelligent protagonist that has been done a thousand times. The only real thing keeping you drawn in is the unique presentation of the art that really isn't even that good in the beginning, but is just used in clever ways. It really makes you think how it can get from this to the masterpiece that is that, and that's called potential. Although Uskoi has a slower start than most, it sets up the woodwork for the rest of the manga to make something truly beautiful. It starts off with our main character, Madarame Baku, who is a gambler that needs a lot of money. To do this, he gains a nervous and naive teammate, Kaji, who is practically his apprentice at the time, who will grow throughout the story, but for most of the story it focuses on Baku. Baku needs all this money because he has none, he quite literally has lost it all, and will put his life on the line, which he technically has lost as well, to put himself in a deadly gamble for a lot of money. All gambles are presided over an elite organization that rivals the government in power, Kakaru, who also subsequently owns Baku's life. The belief in the true art of gambling, making sure all bets are paid and if rules are broken a proper punishment is carried out, as well as making the gamble more fun and twisted. Kakaru won't preside over a normal roulette or slapjack. They put on games that truly make a gambler's blood flowing, and to get the viewer's heart pumping. Things that teeter on the line of severe psychological torture, that at the end of a game, an opponent is both mentally destroyed and their life is forfeited. These gambles are the main conflict of the manga, they're the main draw, but are actually in reality used to bring out the personalities, emotions, and motives of each gambler respectively. These gambles can go from building your own noose to hang from, seeing it slowly get built, to playing poker underwater where your air tanks are the chips, with actually petting your own life. If we look back at Baku, at the beginning of the manga, we truly don't know anything about him. He's an enigma. Through the use of gambles, we get to slowly understand his past, how he lost his life to Kakuro, what motivates him as a gambler, what motivates humans to continue living. The entire first half of the manga fleshes out Baku's character, ideals, and themes perfectly so that he could be a real person. You could imagine him living in the real life, and unlike other really fleshed out characters like Shinji, it's not depressing. It's about a gambler, someone who cannot stop striving for their goal, that keeps digging their own hole to find gold, but one day won't find it. As we see his addiction grow through the gambles more and more, we want to keep reading to find out if the gamble succeeds, how he will pull it off, why he's doing it. It's like a puzzle we want to keep solving. The payoffs for each gamble are really unique as well. Throughout the gamble, we get to see Baku's more true colors, learn more about him, but he still needs to play to win, meaning it's not all Baku character development. 
Baku just doesn't want to win normally, though. His usual opponents are terrorists trying to conquer Kakaro for themselves to practically destroy the world for their own greed. So he wants to destroy them in the most flamboyant and destructful way possible. Like, actually think 30 moves ahead of them, have them play into his hand the entire time without them realizing it, making them think that they're winning when in actuality they're about to be snatched up by the god of death himself. Seeing Baku's plan unfurl like this is straight up drugs, because the opponent and the reader constantly think, well, that's it. You can have outplayed him that bad. But Baku wants the opponent in smithereens. He unveils their lies and tricks and eats them. Now, that's without getting into Baku's character growth after giving him layers on layers upon death after the first half of the manga, and the character development is just so rich. His dynamic between him and the main opponent of the series is one of my tops. I unfortunately cannot get into that without going into spoilers, but just so you know that fully fleshing out a character while setting up ideals and themes is already super hard, but then putting amazing character growth upon that as well is almost unheard of. But Usagoi does it. A wise man once said, characters, story, and setting all exist separately, but all contribute to the theme, while the true aspect that wraps it all together is the art. I haven't talked much about the story because the premise of most of the gambles is spoiler territory itself. The cool part about the gambles is finding out how the referees from Kakarot twist the game to get your blood pumping, what the gamble actually is, all the twists and turns during the game, although the rules may come off simple, are actually very intricate. This is because when we are given rules, we set ourselves into a box, while the author is not in that box. So the author makes decisions in the story that we wouldn't have even thought of, giving off the illusion of the characters being smart while we were just being blinded by our own box, making every single twist hit every single time. I just can't talk about it though, because I don't want to ruin a single thing about it. I will say though, that the last 200 chapters of this manga remain in my top 3 arcs of all time, and the last fight currently resides as my favorite fight of all time. But there's some bias there since the past month I've only been thinking about Usagoi. The story is never bland though. Each gamble never shares even 10% likeness. It's a new rule set for the characters and the reader to explore with new themes and new stakes. It didn't just go into the washer and get a fresh coin of paint. It's clearly shown in the writing that the author has poured his entire brain into thinking a story that delivers a powerful message while making it entertaining and unexpected at the same time. Let's talk about something I can actually discuss though. The art. The thing that wraps up everything together and brings it to a whole nother level. The art in the beginning, along with a lot of aspects in the first 20 chapters, isn't great. It's Looney Tunish and just slightly average besides its presentation. It likes to overuse this neat swirl effect to show the descent of each gambler and have perspectives of you inside a mouth, cause he's the lie eater, get it? But this art evolves over the course of the manga cause it needs to. The art is a living, breathing idea that grows as the characters and the story want to reach new heights. I'll play it straight. At the beginning of Usugoi, it is clear that the author did not mean for this to become a 10 out of 10 manga, and the art shows it as well. As the tone shifts to something more serious, as it shifts from starting from a 7 out of 10 to an 8 out of 10 and further beyond, the art shifts as well to reflect that. This is because this is about gamblers, and the main part of gamblers it focuses on is their emotion. Emotions can come out through words, but the raw, unfiltered emotions come out through actions and facial expressions. During the breakdown moments, the intense moments, or even the slight cracks with the facade, eventually it becomes so human that the emotion is practically dripping off the pages. When the characters are breaking down, It'll put a super close-up shot where you can see their entire world breaking in front of them, their eye veins bulging out, acts of desperation. Everything is portrayed in a way that it looks like a photo out from the real world. It doesn't just become a super realistic manga though, with every single emotion hitting straight into your soul, because it doesn't lose its metaphors and unique presentation skills. 
Baku gains the metaphor of being the god of death, being this grim reaper that takes down other gamblers, while the manga will also have these breathtaking shots taking the antagonists' goals and ambitions and turning them into symbols, such as them becoming beast-like or standing on top of a mountain becoming the perfect gambler. It makes every single chapter fresh and exciting, never using the same shot twice. The shots will take these metaphors and realistic art and bring it even further, where some panels you could take out and look like a professional painting, where the shot will either be hyper-focused on one a part of the body, showing how it's cracking, or a wide shot of both characters, with the intensity practically forming a string. Combined with the masterful characters, art, and story that I can't really speak of, there are still a variety of reasons that I cannot get into for why it's a 10 out of 10 meaning the various fights that happen in the manga between the referees and terrorists, each having their own quirks such as fighting on healings or blowing bubbles into others' faces that happen in 5 or less seconds, meaning each one is a fight to the death with taking blows to give your own punch an advantage. The fights are the palate cleanser of the series. After doing an intense gamble with their thinking and twists, you just need something new, and that's people just getting their brains bashed in. Because if you think about it, fighting is just gambling with less steps. Just because they aren't the main aspect doesn't mean that the art or story falters. We see bones crumbling into each other. Think of Mortal Kombat fatalities every other panel and then a unique packaged story to go along with it. The fights aren't the main aspect in my opinion though, so I won't linger on it for too long, but that doesn't mean it isn't peak as well. Another amazing aspect that I can't really touch on is the ending. The ending actually being the last 200 chapters of the manga. This is what people will truly die for and defend with their life. The first 300 chapters are solid 8 out of 10 in my opinion. A really interesting read that never gets boring or stale, but those last 200 chapters on everyone's top 3 arcs of all time. The author takes his 300 chapters of experience in storytelling and art, and sharpens them to cut through all of the other arcs out there, so his truly stands out. He takes some gambles with himself with some risky storytelling, but it pays off tremendously. He never just forgets about the first 300 chapters though. Everything always matters and plays into the endgame, making everything seem like there was a meaning to it, that it all fell into place for a reason. That arc beats everything else out, in my opinion, and those 200 chapters alone should be a reason to read it, not even counting the things I've said before. Overall, Usugoi is one of the best pieces of fiction I have ever seen, and I've seen quite a bit. You can even check out my MAL in the description. Although it does have a slow start in the beginning, everything starts ramping up exponentially until it becomes perfection. Please just give it the first two arcs and you'll be hooked. And those are the worst two arcs and I'm still saying that because they're still good. If you're not hooked though, and you just aren't feeling it, drop it. Go read something else. But for the people that are willing to continue reading, that are going to take the gamble on Usagoi, they're going to win that bet tenfold and more. It really is that worth it, and I implore you giving it a try. As Baku said, a gambler who keeps on winning forever does not exist in this world. So you will see him either succeed in becoming the perfect gambler, or at the last second see it all fade away. That gamble is up to you though. Uh, thank you for watching my first YouTube video. I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment and subscribe to see my next video. And if you have any thoughtful or unthoughtful words, you can put them down there in the comment section. This video also proves that Madaraimai Baku is the best main character out of anything else. Uh, so he's going to be the leader of the goat's table. But uh, I really do appreciate it and have a good day.